Okay, guys, so just to present ourselves first, my name is Victoria, this is Erika next to me, even though you see her in a different background. Uh, we are from Europe Language Jobs, as you probably know, or maybe you don't, Europe Language Jobs is the job board for uh, multinational recruitment. We focus on jobs all around Europe for people who speak uh, more than one languages. Uh, and uh, today we are um, uh, doing this webinar is a part of our ongoing virtual event that is called 30 days to get a job the challenge. So if you're interested in any topic that, uh, that is about how to get a job or how to uh, do any of the steps in the process of uh, getting that next job that you really like, you can go on our website, europelanguagejobs.com, the same way is spelled here probably somewhere and you can you can check uh, our content that we prepared there for you as well we have a bunch of uh, other webinars that are coming up and next week is our last week so if you're still interested feel free to check the schedule for next week and of course the last thing that i would like to say before i give the word to erica is uh, thank you to our sponsors who actually helped us make these webinars uh, uh, free and uh, accessible to everybody. Uh, so they are Fujitsu, WebHealth Portugal, WebHealth Spain, T-Tech, Cytel, 5CA, and Logical Recruitment. So the word now goes to Erica. Thank you, thank you, Victoria. Yes, uh, I just dropped the link for you guys. So if you wanted to check our website, Europe Language Jobs, if you're looking for a specific position with your native language. And then the second link is the link towards the event. Although we are in the third week, we still have uh, a lot of content. And now we really wanted to give our a warm welcome to Delicia.com. Uh, currently based in the United States. We're very, very, very excited to have her. She is a career and life coach and also founder of the Daily Lingo Virtual Academy. So Delicia is here today and she will speak about the ultimate toolkit for a successful job hunt. So now the word is to you. Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Hopefully technology is on our side today. Um, thank you for the warm welcome, Erica and Victoria. I'm so excited. I hope you all too. Uh, let us know in the comments what type of role you're looking for and what type of industry you're looking for. So maybe since it's a small intimate group, I can kind of um, improvise and talk through some of those um, ideas and some of those uh, needs that you have. So take advantage of this opportunity to have me um, supporting you through this webinar. So I'm gonna share my screen really quickly. Um, give me a thumbs up in the comments if you can see this. If not, we will figure it out. Let me see, where is the chat? I have to have it here too. Okay, cool. So like Erica said, I am Delicia Larcon, founder and CEO of Daily Lingo Academy, which is an as an educator, career coach, motivator, life coach for recent grads and also mid-level career professionals. And today we're talking about the ultimate toolkit for a successful job hunt to get that opportunity, career that we're all looking for. And as I like to work with any individuals or clients is really figuring out the vision for a long-term goal in the career, not just like the next job or the next opportunity. It's more of a holistic viewpoint. So that's kind of the focus of today is making it a big picture um, conversation as well as technical tools to help you with that, right? So it's like, we have this big dream and vision, but how do we get there? How do we make that possible? And that's kind of what we'll talk about today in a very condensed version, but of course, uh, ask questions in the chat and Erica and Victoria will field them. And then I will also try to pay attention to answer specific questions. So before we begin any technical stuff, we have to begin big. So let's visualize what it is you want to accomplish. This is a little visualization exercise. And if you want to stand up, stretch it out, let's open our energy field. You can dance it out. I can play some music. If we want to have one minute of kind of get the jitters out of our body, move our system, stretch. I know some people maybe sit all day if we're working remotely. I made like a standing desk today um, so we can have more of a fun, energetic field and kind of return to our body and return to our alignment of our inner selves so we can um, really connect to what we want to do. There's so many opportunities out there, so many things happening in the world all at once. So I want you all to be in here with me um, on this webinar. If you're 
uh, can put your cell phones on silent or face them down. So we're really present, you and me together with Erica and Victoria and Europe Language Jobs and all the sponsors. Thank you again for having us. Um, and really connecting so you can give yourself the opportunity to really visualize what that is. So now that we're kind of a little comfortable, let's close our eyes and let's start to envision. You probably already have that vision for yourself. If you feel comfortable sharing in the chat what that vision is for yourself, please do so. If not, write it down on a piece of paper if you have a notebook with you. Um, let's try to uh, keep away from technology today. Um, there's some scientific evidence. If we write it down, uh, it's more likely to rewire and connect in our brain a little bit better than if we're typing it on the computer or on our phones. So let's try to use that exercise. So let's close our eyes and really envision what it is that big dream, that big goal, that big aspiration. Is it working for a specific company? Is it working for a specific role? Is it working at a university? Do you wanna get your master's? Do you wanna get your PhD? Do you wanna get your bachelor's? And there's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on your own inner knowing, your own inner self and what it is you want to do. And this might be very like abstract and out there. And it's like, why are we doing this? Like I came here to get a checklist. We'll get to the checklist, I promise. But first we have to do this step. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. Um, but let's put on a timer. I'll put it here for, give yourself at least one minute to really visualize that. So really, really savor it, feel it. What does it feel like to get that opportunity, to get that role, to work at that company, to have maybe a different boss, a different supervisor, or you're the supervisor, or you're the director, or you're the CEO. If you don't want any of those big titles, that's fine. And if you do, that's fine too. What it is that you want. Let's really crystallize what that is. Because if we really don't know what that is, then how are we gonna get there? How are we gonna really figure it out? So let's walk through that, let's think about it, let's process that. Give yourself that one minute of silence, of moment to connect to what that is. I know you're all over the world, which is super exciting to meet people from different countries and everyone is in a unique situation. So let's, take away maybe those difficult obstacles happening in your brain. Let's put our brain on pause for a moment and say, okay, let's dream this dream. So there's our minute. I hope that served as a grounding exercise to really connect. And now let's center ourselves. Let's really be present. If you feel called to, you can rub your palms and put them on your heart, on your stomach, on your shoulders, wherever you're feeling called to loosen the grip, loosen the tension, let's loosen that up so that we can be open, really open to the opportunities that are, exist out there for us. So we have to really regulate our nervous system so we're open to those opportunities, right? So, Let's take one deep breath in. Another deep breath in. Release one, two, three. And one last deep breath in. Three, two, one. Good. Awesome, thank you for joining me on that visualization grounding and really setting the container so we can move forward and get that job that you all want. So let's dive in, hope you fully have a notepad, a pen, uh, ready to learn, ask questions. And our big learning outcomes today are find evidence that you are qualified for the job or dream career that you want. Sometimes we get in our in our heads and our brains and we're like, I'm not qualified enough, I'm not good enough, I need this, I need more, I need more, I need more, I need more education, I need more this, more that. And in reality, we, we have to take a step back and look at what we've already accomplished in our lives. Um, can you let me know in the comments if you're mid-level, entry-level or um, supervisory roles, where are you in your career search? So I understand where we're at um, and kind of tailor it to that if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat. 
And then we're gonna debunk some issues, some obstacles you might face in the job search process. And then how do we navigate this job search process like a boss? So a little background on who I am, if this is the first time we're meeting, so excited to have you here. Uh, my background is in higher education. I went to Fairfield University and I studied psychology and Spanish with a minor in educational studies. I taught Spanish in South Carolina. Like Erica said, I'm in, based in the United States in the state of Pennsylvania. I grew up in New Jersey. My parents are from Paraguay. So I'm first generation uh, Paraguayan American in the United States. I worked in higher education as a program coordinator, academic counselor, TRIO Student Support Services, which is a governmental agency that supports students through college and then applied to jobs and graduate school. And I transitioned to become an online educator, career coach, life coach, because this is really what I love to do. Webinars, supporting individuals and motivating people to really connect to what they want to do in their life. And, it, and sometimes it's a bridge job that gets you to become the CEO that you want. Or sometimes it's accepting a position that will be the next opportunity for the next big thing. So we're going to just dissect that today. So mid-level. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing. Like I said, my parents are from Paraguay. This is my family. Uh, I wanted to share them with you because... They are always supporting me in all these adventures and traveling. I lived in Spain, Australia, Brazil, Paraguay, and I love traveling the world. So this is so much fun seeing everyone from Belgium and India. And, and uh, I, I think I saw Colombia too. Cool. Nigeria, Italy. Awesome. So if you have any questions, need me to translate anything in Espanol, I can do it really quickly. Uh, but the conversation will be in English. Mid-level, okay, cool. So the first thing that we talk about with anyone I work with, if it's mid-level, entry-level, whatever category you're in, is our mindset. So Webster um, defines mindset, right, as a mental attitude or inclination. I'm sure if you're a mid-level career person, you've heard of mindset. Someone maybe taught you about mindset and a professional development opportunity, or maybe you read some books. Uh, but we really have to dissect what our mindset is, where it's at, and go from there and really work through what is blocking us sometimes in applying for an opportunity. So that's really quickly um, what I wanted to talk about with mindset. And then that connects a little bit to imposter syndrome and belonging and deserving. And that sometimes impedes us to applying for a job. Sometimes we see something and we're like, oh, I would love to apply for this, but Oh, and then your brain gets in in intact and it's like, oh, you're not good enough. You need you need more information. You need more degrees. You need more years of experience. Um, but I love to lean on Audrey Lord's quote, which is when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. So I'm sure you have big mission and visions of service for your community or the world. And when we look at that vision, that's why we did that visioning exercise at the beginning. When we look at that big vision and worthiness of that vision, that means that because you thought about it, you're really capable of accomplishing it. So when we, we really connect to our mindset and stay in that vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid or not. And we're going to di dissect a little bit uh, imposter syndrome and belonging and deserving and perhaps come to the root of why sometimes we don't apply for things. So, so here are some affirmations that if you would like to take a screenshot or write down really quickly or take a picture of that I use with clients and students to really be part of their process. Before we do any technical things, we have to really connect to our mindset work, right? There's three pillars that I like to work through with students or individuals or groups like this mindset. And then we're going to talk about technical things, the research and then interview process. So I'm worthy of this opportunity. I can do this. I want to do this. I'm worthy of this job opportunity. I'm worthy of this career choice. And I have all the skills necessary to apply for these roles. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to uh, write this down or screenshot it if you find it helpful in your process, where you are in your career, and what you're looking for in your life. 
So while you do that, I'm gonna read a comment here. I work with the government agency in Nigeria, Energy Commission of Nigeria, but my dream and vision is to go outside there, read more about renewable energy and have to impact in my community. I mean, awesome. So that's a huge, amazing vision to have and to hold, right? To use all the skills and resources for renewable energy um, and support our ever-changing climate and our ever-changing world uh, with everything that's going on. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So um, give me a thumbs up if we're ready to transition to the next slide. If you're still, oh, sorry. If you're still copying, that's fine. Um, can you, is there like a thumbs up feature? Yeah, there should. Um, we're good to move on, but we're still copying. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So self-worth and relationship with funding or money mindset is related to the job search process. Why? Because we're exchanging our hours and our expertise for money, for dollars or euros or whatever uh, currency in your country is because that's the way the system is work set up right now. So at the root of it sometimes is if we're feeling worthy of receiving X amount of dollars, and this relates to negotiation as well, do we feel confident enough to negotiate a salary increase at, in the job uh, market or the job experience? So this is something that you're gonna do personally as a journal exercise. I invite you to kind of think about this and journal about it. What are your money mindset stories? What is your relationship to money? Um, what messages did you receive about money when you were a kid, when you were a young adult, even now as adults? What are the stories that we hear? What are the stories that we receive? And how does that influence the way you think about money, how you negotiate for a job? And how does that connect to your job search process? Uh, sometimes we get caught up in I need a resume, I need a cover letter, I need this, I need that, I need to practice interviewing. But we don't really sit down to process what is the money mindsets behind the money stories that we hear, that we grew up with. And this is very personal. I'm not gonna ask you to share this because this is a very uh, personal journal writing exercise. Um, so this is for you yourself to do um, on your own time. So just a little exercise that we kind of work through to support you in that process and how this affects you when you're applying to a job. And this happens a lot unconsciously on a subconscious level. Like you see a job and then you see a salary post and, you're, and you automatically either think, I'm worthy of receiving that dollar amount or that's too much, I could never, or that's too little, I need more, right? Um, so it depends on your own individual experiences and where you're at. So if you want to take a moment to write this down, take a screenshot again, um, journal about this later. So you can really dig deep and begin that process with understanding and unpacking what is at the root of that relationship and how does that relate to your job application process. Um, this can be its own webinar. So that's why we're not going to um, dive deep because I know uh, we came for a little checklist, but we'll get there, I promise. So I'm gonna see all the participants to give me a thumbs up if we're ready to move on. And, and let me know if I'm talking too fast, if I'm going too fast, or this is a good speed. I wanna check the pulse with you all since I um, can't really see your faces. So um, if you can let me know in the comments, that would be great. All right, we got a thumbs up. Cool. So, so now we are going to do another writing exercise and this we will do together because this is part of the job hunt process. Belief in yourself. We're gonna have an evidence-based activity. So write down all your accomplishments, big or small or medium or whatever you have accomplished in your life that you are so proud of and also accomplishments that you might not be um, thinking that it's important to put on your resume, but it might be. So write it, write it all down. Just have a master list of 
when you if you graduated from university, if you got your master's or PhD, or if you have a promotion in the, in the pipeline, or if you already have a uh, promotion, any awards you received in in middle school and high school at university um, at your job, any accomplishment in your community, if you volunteered with your community, write down all of those accomplishments. I'm going to give you maybe let's do three minutes. Let's do four. I like even numbers. Four. We'll do four minutes to write down all your accomplishments. Even if you won the spelling bee in third grade, write it down. Because when you were in third grade, that was a freaking big accomplishment. It might not seem so big now as adults, but I'm sure when you were in third grade, ask your parents, you're probably so excited. So write it all down. At university, if you were a, a, a leader in your church, or if you were a leader in your community, um, or volunteer, if you volunteered, like in the United States, Habitat for Humanity is a big thing. I'm pretty sure they have a Habitat for Humanity worldwide now, but um, if you wanna share in the comments, what are some uh, volunteer opportunities or anything that you've been a part of, please feel free to share. If not, that's okay. Um, that is something that will become your master evidence list. And we're going to talk about what that is. And let's see what other accomplishments I can give as an example. If you played any sports, if you're an athlete, if you were in the US, it's uh, called like junior varsity or varsity, which would be in high school, um, the big teams that you play um, against people, write it all down. If you were a research assistant or worked at, with a professor really closely in university, or even if you worked at Starbucks or worked at FedEx or what's a, a store in, I don't remember the stores in Spain now. <laughs> What's a good example? <laughs> Write down the stories in the comments. Um, or I'm trying to think. Is Pig no Piggly Wiggly is in the South? Um, Australia. What's a store? Wow, I'm blanking on my stores abroad. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have about two more minutes to write it all down. And any job titles that you're very proud of, if you're program coordinator, senior director, account executive, manager. Uh, client specialist, whatever role you have. Staying in a job I was not appreciating Trey very Bradley for so long. So sorry, Marina, I hope you have found something else. If not, I hope this presentation serves you to find something to leave that position because that's a big topic now about how we're, uh, a lot of people are underappreciated, underpaid and treated poorly. And that's basic human rights, basic human needs, in my opinion, right? That you need to be treated fairly and uh, pay, compensated fairly for your work and your time and your energy because you're worthy of it. So I hope you're out of that situation. If not, I hope you are in route to finding another opportunity. So I have about one more minute. Um, how long are your lists? Are they a page, two pages, three pages? Share in the comments. Let's put this here. Thirty five seconds. So this will become your master evidence list. And what does that mean? It's just a tool and an exercise for you to have handy when you are feeling imposter syndrome, when you're feeling that you're not worthy of applying for something. Um, so you can pull out this list and say, no, you know what? I actually have a lot of experiences. I actually have a lot of accomplishments. And you can see a physical piece of paper that shows you this information. So this is a trick and a tool to kind of counter act what your brain is trying to tell you, what your um, subconscious is trying to tell you, or maybe your insecurities or your imposter syndrome. So you can say, hey, 
look at this list. I'm actually a badass. I'm actually pretty good. So I can apply for this. I can ask for this amount of money and I'm worthy of it. So I hope that um, activity was helpful to kind of ground yourself and understanding that you do have the skills and the tools to apply for a job or whatever opportunity you're looking at. So now, now let's split it up. Now you have your mindset right, you're ready to go. You're like, yes, I got this, I'm gonna apply. Okay, how do I do this? <laughs> so many things happening at once, so many job opportunities. So you can do this in Excel spreadsheet or on a Google doc or in your notebook, um, not right now, but in general, in life, uh, you can write down or type a list of companies you're interested in working for and with who. So even though, um, there are a lot of changes happening in the world. One of the biggest changes that I think is positive for the world of work is there are a lot more remote opportunities. So someone in India might qualify for a company or a job opportunity in London or the US or vice versa, someone in the US or London in, in Spain or Australia. And that's why I think Europe language jobs is such a great platform We'll talk about other platforms too, but this is a great opportunity because Europe language job is worldwide and internationally focused. So if you're someone who wants to go abroad, then they're, they're probably the first place you should look at because a lot of companies or a lot of other platforms are not based worldwide. They're really country specific. Like if I live in the US, I can only look at jobs in the US unless I do a lot more research. But if I go to Europe language jobs and they're a platform, I'll show it in a minute, um, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, you can pick what country you want to go to, what kind of opportunity you're looking at, um, and that's really helpful. So part of your research is also writing down roles you're interested in and creating an, ex, an Excel spreadsheet to help you stay organized. So this might be uh, something you already have done if you're a mid-level career person. If not, I hope this serves as a new way to think about it. So really quickly, this is what EuropeLanguageJobs.com looks like. So when you show up or you type it, right, EuropeLanguageJobs.com on the web, this is just a screenshot, so it's not gonna actually do it, but you can type here, your position skills or keyword, what you're looking for, what language, and then find a job. And what the platform does is it creates the opportunity for you. So it sets it all up and it starts to show you uh, how much you can get paid, if they offer relocation services, sometimes if they offer housing, right, if you're maybe thinking of an au pair position, or if at a university, sometimes universities provide housing, if that's something you're interested in. Um, since I don't really know what industries people are in, um, I only know maybe energies in the government, but um, you can set it up based on your industry as well. So, um, of course, Indeed, I'm sure you've heard about it, um, is also another job search, which seems to be like the biggest thing. Um, or LinkedIn is probably your best opportunity to network with people who are in specific jobs that you're interested in. If you don't have a LinkedIn, that's okay. You can set it up. It's free. Um, and it provides you opportunities to connect with people um, that you're interested in. You can connect with me. You can connect with Erica. Um, and we're always posting jobs. And Europe Language Jobs is always posting articles and reviews. Um, and different career coaches are also posting information. So definitely use it as a tool for networking and also finding jobs, right? I put the screenshot, linkedin.com backslash jobs. So you can go to the job section here and then you can pick here what type of opportunity you're looking for. My jobs, job alerts, what kind of salary you want. You can do it. Okay, I only want jobs from in US dollars, 50,000 to 100,000 US dollars or euros, 50,000 euro, 50, euros to 80,000 euros. Depending on how your country does the salary, you can set it up. Um, and I think that's really helpful because sometimes um, you need to do that. And then another opportunity is part of your research is going directly to the company's website. So I put TikTok as an example because I love TikTok. I always use it. Um, I always post uh, informational videos there. Let's say I had someone who's interested in working at the company but not making videos. Um, so you will go to careers.tiktok.com and the same thing, they have a search engine 
What kind of job are you looking for? What keywords? And then the location. And they split it up based on country. So that's part of your research process also, using Europe language jobs, Indeed, LinkedIn, and the company's website. Does anyone have any idea what company they want to work at um, or are looking for jobs? Um, so we can maybe do um, an example and go to the actual website and see what we find. We can do that together as an activity um, if that's something the community here is interested in. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to do. We can do that at the end. Another opportunity is higher education institutions. Sometimes people don't realize that you can find jobs at universities. Um, so an example, Fairfield University, which is where I graduated from, they have, for example, graduate assistant for women's soccer. This one is part-time, but they also have part-time, I mean, full-time opportunities. So it gives you the job description, everything, and you can apply. So another thing that companies will tell you is whether it's remote or it has to be in person. And lucky for you, a lot of opportunities are remote and can be worldwide. And a lot of, I'm not gonna say a lot of companies, but there are some companies that do offer, um, what's the word? Um, oh my God, I'm blanking. They offer visas um, to work in the US. And if you do your PhD program, they offer right student visas and a master's program for international students. Another search engine that maybe some people don't know about because it's very higher education focused, but they have opportunities there depending on, and this is worldwide as well, um, for higher education institutions. You can write here, um, it's based on professors or administrative jobs or executive administrative or jobs outside of higher education, but which are academic focus. So you can split it up based on your interests, right? So for me, if I was interested in applying for a job, I would go to education, um, the city, let's say I wanna to move to New York City, I would put New York, or if I wanna go abroad, I can put maybe London, uh, where else would I go? I would go back to Spain and look based on the country. So. That's a great opportunity as well. If you didn't know about Inside Higher Ed, they have an international uh, student section, not student, international um, employment um, section for anyone trying to go abroad or come to the United States. So spend some time researching there if that's something you're interested in. Um, and also, if you have your master's or your PhD and want to stay in academia, this is a great opportunity as well. And they also have a podcast, if that's something you want to listen to, to hear uh, more about the, their opportunities. Another uh, good database to look at for jobs is ProFellow. Like I said, this is more academic focused. However, um, you, you would be surprised at how many engineers or technical roles and administrative logistical um, support they need. So I would do a uh, browsing search here. You can create a free um, profile and they send you email updates um, through their website. So you can look at fellowships, articles, funding directory supports you with funding for graduate school. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm not sure if anyone's interested in graduate school, but um, since we're talking about jobs holistically, I thought I'd uh, include that as well. So that's another great platform to use. And then Fulbright is also uh, an entity with an IIE and they offer uh, jobs. So it's part of academia, also part of administrative, logistical, international work. So if you're not familiar with Fulbright, Fulbright actually has specific offices in certain countries. So for ex they're called commissions, right? So the Fulbright Commission is in Brazil. They have one, I'm pretty sure they have one in Spain. They have one in the UK. And they are always, not always, but they're sometimes hiring people to work within those commissions and they offer um, salary and benefits. So that's something if you're interested in um, academia, PhD, or working for an international organization, that, that's a great opportunity to look at. Um, oh, someone's interested in grad school PhD. Awesome. Do you know where in the US or Europe, abroad? Uh, where are you located? Um, so you can apply for a Fulbright, you can apply for grants and fellowships and pro fellow is, in, is um, based in the United States, the like organization, but they offer international 
fellowship support as well. So make sure you look at that information if that's something you're interested in. So make sure you have that copy. Um, and then something specific, uh, I know on our uh, TikTok live that I did with um, Claire, uh, some, there were a lot of people from the UK. So I decided to include this just in case those same people were on the presentation. So look at partnerships between Fulbright and Spain, Fulbright in the UK, Fulbright in India, Fulbright in Be Belgium. They might have opportunities for the summer um, and also job opportunities, internships, bridge opportunities, temporary roles. Just look at their websites, individual websites, and you might find something really cool. In Nigeria, both looking at US, Europe, and Canada. Okay, cool. So th definitely use uh, Pro Fellowship and Fulbright. They will, those will be very helpful. I know Fulbright has a, a, a dual opportunity with, um, with Canada, and you can apply from Nigeria. So uh, I would check that out. So another part, another thing that's part of the job search process is networking. So this is something that a lot of people, I always hear that they don't like to do because it's tedious or it takes too much time, but we can make it simple. Keep it simple. Now in the era of technology and work from home and uh, the internet, keep it simple. You can set up 20 minute coffee dates on Zoom or a phone call um, with someone that you're interested in learning about what they do. For example, if I was interested in what Erica does at Europe Language Jobs, I would send her a message on LinkedIn and say, hey, can we connect about um, your role? I'm interested in either working at Europe Language Jobs or working in something similar. Can we chat about it? And I'm sure eight out of 10 times they will respond. If they don't respond, then that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's not, um, it doesn't really mean anything about you. So that's another part of the mindset work is realizing that we shouldn't go down this big rabbit hole of, oh my God, they don't like me. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Like she doesn't want to talk to me or he doesn't want to talk to me. No, just find another company, find something else. There's billions of people in the world and there are probably millions of companies. Someone will find you and connect with you and hire you. I'm sure, I'm very sure of that. Um, use LinkedIn, like I said before. Social media is a big tool as well. TikTok, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. People are always willing to support other people. And that's how I found Europe Language Jobs. Someone messaged me and said they found me on TikTok and wanted to connect. And that's how we're here doing this webinar. So it's all about networking, connecting and talking to people and seeing how you can work with each other. And someone can keep you in mind for a job opportunity. So I would use those resources and tools available to you that are virtually free. And also your alumni network. If you went to university and have a degree from that university, no matter when you graduated, I'm sure they have an alumni network and activities and a job board that help people figure it out. Um, so I would connect back with um, those opportunities. Uh, let's take a little break here. I speak three languages, Spanish, French, and English at C2 level and Italian and intermediate. How do I find a remote job related to education or languages? Inside higher ed, um, we can look at inside higher ed. You can go to Europe language jobs. They have opportunities based on language skills and based on um, education as well. So I would definitely check out Europe language jobs, LinkedIn, uh, inside higher education. I'm pretty sure th those are great places to start. And like I said, set up virtual coffee chats, informational calls, informational video calls. Um, so I'm gonna take a pause here. A lot of information. How are we doing? What's the pulse check? How, any, any other thoughts before I continue? We're almost there, my friends. I know it might be late where you're at. Um, with the time difference. So how are we doing? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do we need a, a little coffee break? A little dance break? What do we need? Can, could you repeat or type what to write when contacting someone, please? Um, so this is recorded. You can go back at minute 54 or 52 maybe um, to watch what I said. Uh, verbatim. It'll be on YouTube. 
So, but really quickly, you can just say, don't make it a big deal. That's my advice. And keep it simple. Just say, for example, I'm talking to Erica. I saw I saw her at LinkedIn on Europe language jobs. I don't know who she is, um, but I'm interested in it. Okay. Hi, Erica. How are you doing? I'm really interested in Europe language jobs and learning more about what you do. Can we set up a virtual coffee chat? That's it. And they don't respond. That's okay. Let's find someone else. Hello, Victoria. I'm interested in X, Y, and Z. Let's connect. If they don't respond, don't make it a big deal about your self-esteem and your self-worth. Let's keep finding someone else to connect with. If it's something that you really, really wanna do and you really, really wanna work at that company and that's your dream job, then you can follow up with them within a week. Give them, give them 10 business days. People are doing a lot and there's a lot happening and people's life schedules change a lot. So, and a business day or a business week is Monday through Friday, right? Don't include Saturday and Sunday. So I would, I, I would give people a little bit more time and space to get back to you. Um, I've had people reach out to me two months later and they're like, oh my God, I read your email, but I never connected. Do you still want to connect? Sure. Let's connect and see what happens. Um, so that's kind of my thought process and how I teach students to look at it because um, like I said before, there are a lot of opportunities out there. So really quickly on your resume, um, this is more technical uh, advice. And it, it again, it's gonna be very different based on your industry, based on your country and based on what position you're applying for. So this is very generalized information that might not apply to you. However, take what you need and leave the rest. So entry level position, I advise one page resumes, make sure you're saving as a PDF and you're sending as a PDF. Because if you send it as a Word document, the ATS system, which is the uh, automatic tracking system, uh, changes the font, changes the format, and it gets jumbled up. And then the recruiter or the manager doesn't can't read it and tosses it. So make sure you're not making those careless mistakes. And if you do, it's okay, do it next time. Keep it pushing. Um, I've sent resumes that were three pages long and I've never heard from people. It's okay. We, we, move, we live and we learn. Um, but I would recommend do not use Canva templates because Canva creates a graphic and the ATS system does not pick up the graphics. Even though it looks really pretty and it's very organized, the ATS system does not pick it up. So I would recommend just doing it in a Word document in Google Docs, or if you have it on your computer, type it up black and white and save it as a PDF. I'll show an example on the next slide. And if you're mid-level career, two to three pages, depending on the role, um, is fine. Um, I like to keep it more concise, two pages, unless you're applying to a PhD program or a master's program or a research opportunity, uh, which you need a CV, a curriculum vitae, it could be two to five pages, depending on where you're at in your career. Uh, but like I said, take what connects to you based on where you're at in your life. This is not gonna apply to everyone, um, but always include internships, volunteer experience, community engagement, awards, publications, um, international experience, study abroad experience, teaching abroad. Even if you took a vacation and you did something really cool in the country and you want to talk about it, I would include it because it, it, it talks to you as a holistic person. We're not robots. We're not just here to punch a time clock. We have experiences and we have things that we're interested in. So don't be afraid to show your personality on the application process. And then, so this is an example of a very simple resume, a general resume. Um, so this is taken as an example from Fairfield University Career Development page uh, and gives you an example uh, for entry level once you've graduated and once you're uh, more into your career, obviously your education is gonna go up the bottom and not at the top. So um, this is very specific to US standards. So again, you would have to apply to um, your country, your industry and what, um, is happening in your specific area of expertise. 
So another piece of the application process is your cover letter. What is the point of the cover letter? Is to showcase your interest, your passion for the work or company you're interested in. And it's an opportunity for you to share your ideas for the role you're applying to. And it's to show your personality, to show who you are, to show what you're interested in. It's not to regurgitate what's on your resume. What's on your resume is on your resume. It's not to regurgitate what is there. So it's to add more opportunities to showcase who you are. So I'm gonna take a pause here. What's in the chat? Uh, under publications, is it okay to include an opinion article that, a, yes, that a, a newspaper published? Yes, you can include the link to that newspaper article. Don't include the actual article, but a link to it. What if awards were in high school? Um, depending on the award, if you believe that it was from a, a renowned institution or from the government or very important to your career, let's say you were an AP chemistry major and you did something really cool at the, at the science fair, you won a national award, and now you're applying for your PhD or your master's in chemistry, I think that's important to include because it showcases your interest from a very young age. So you have to really discern whether it, it matches what you're applying to. If it doesn't match, then maybe don't include it. I used to send articles to newspapers. I'm not a writer, but I enjoy writing. Awesome. So what roles are you interested in? Do you need to be writing in those roles? Then it's important to include it so they can see that you're a good writer. Um, nowadays, a new format of resume are recommended which contain graphical elements. So how we deal with it. What do you mean by graphical um, elements? Who recommends graphical elements? Because that's not standard practice um, to include, unless, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide, um, there is an asterisk there, but for general, um, what graphics? Government state award, then yes, I would include that. Um, so like I said, um, if, you're, if you're an artist, a graphic designer, a musician, an actress, actor, your portfolio and your application is gonna be very different than a standard resume. So that is, those are industries that are very different. Um, which colorful location or logos? Unless you're applying for uh, a graphic design role, a social media role, or something that is creative and artistic, I wouldn't include logo or colors or anything to uh, that the ATS system will not um, track or see. The ATS system is gonna convert that image into a text and then the text is not gonna be legible. So that's what happens even if you submit it as a PDF. So it's important to keep it just plain and simple, black and white, in a Word document. It's not as fun or as sexy, but the ATS system will not pick it up. I don't know who's recommending to put logos and pictures or colors, but I do not recommend that. Unless, like I said, an asterisk, if you're an artist, a graphic designer, social media manager, musician, that is very different because those industries are more creative. But if you're applying for a program coordinator role at TikTok, um, they might ask you to do a TikTok video because it's TikTok, but let's say we're applying to what's a generic company like Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson is not going to uh, want to see logos or colors um, unless you're applying to like a fun company culture, which I don't know if Johnson & Johnson is there yet. Um, so the last part of kind of the job hunt process is the interview. So <laughs> you got through your mindset. You got through your mindset. You got through, okay, I got. I, I did my research. I'm going to apply for this job. All right. Now I, I did my resume, my cover letter. Okay. Now I got the job. I got through the AT, I got through the ATS system. Now I got the job interview. Generally in the United States, this might be very different abroad. There's a phone screening if it's a, if it's a US based company they might follow this structure abroad even you get a phone screening usually 20 to 30 minutes depending on the recruiter maybe 45 minutes to get all the information um, 
be prepared with your resume, have it handy to answer questions. And it's kind of a formality to make sure that you're still interested in the role and that you still want to apply for um, the opportunity. Um, indeed, I agreed with you, however, at least in Europe, the HR coach recommend it. Uh, depending on your uh, industry and your opportunity, uh, you can try it out. If you're not getting calls, it could be because it's not going through the um, through the ATS system, unless you're physically emailing it to the recruiter, the manager, or the HR system, or the HR person. But if you're applying online to the any job board, this the automatic system is not going to pick it up, um, unless the HR manager gave you their email, their specific email to send it. Cool, my work. But if it's automatic, it's not going to work. Um, so video interview. Uh, you're gonna look at your tech, you're gonna use your computer or your phone to do it on Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meets. Lighting is important and make sure you practice, practice, practice what you're saying and what your experiences are. And you can practice in the mirror or record yourself on Zoom and play it back to see how you're sounding and what you're saying um, to help you feel comfortable doing a face-to-face -face conversation on a screen. Or if your country is still is able to do in-person interviews, Great, then you follow in-person interview um, protocols. So we are almost there, my friends. I hope this has been helpful so far. Um, so what happens next? Let's make it happen. Like I said, get organized, Excel spreadsheet, dates, deadlines, requirements. I recommend saving the job that you see as a PDF on your desktop, because sometimes when you go back to the link and the job post has expired, you can no longer see it. Um, and you need to know what's on that job post when you're applying to the job or going for the interview. So you know that you're all on the same page. Like I said, write down your accomplishments, your interests, et cetera. Research, program requirements, job requirements, deadlines, financial aid support, grant opportunities if you're applying to a PhD program. And like I said before, network, 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 connect with people on LinkedIn, connect with people on social media, network with your alumni groups. It's nine out of 10 times, someone will recommend you for a job and sometimes that will be faster, right? Let's say, let's say, hey, I'm really, uh, I really recommend um, Erica or um, let's see if I can, Marina, you should bring her in for an interview. And you're more likely to do that faster because People like uh, recommendations. So don't be afraid to connect with your network and ask people that you know to connect you. So definitely take advantage of who you know and um, if you built relationships with them. And the most important thing is trust the process, trust the journey, trust yourself. Uh, like I said, affirmations are really helpful. I'm worthy of receiving the job offer, worthy of receiving the job opportunity, like we did in the beginning, visualize your end goal, your vision of that degree, if you're applying for a program, graduation, job offer, acceptance, negotiation, trust the process, ask for you what you want, and then trust the timing also. Sometimes we get a little anxious and ahead of ourselves and we don't give it enough time. So things happen exactly when they're supposed to, at least that's my firm belief. Um, and you're not late or behind or to anything. You're right on time. You're right where you need to be. So we can breathe into that and really breathe into those opportunities that are coming up. So now let's have a question and answer session. I think we have maybe, 30 more minutes or um, Erica, if you would like to remind me. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we do have a few more minutes. And so if, if you want to answer um, as many questions as you can, and if not, we can also uh, provide your contact information, our contact information. Uh, I want to remind you all that um, this is being recorded. And so tomorrow we will be sending, well, tomorrow, no, because it's Saturday, <laughs> but uh, on Sunday <laughs> we'll be sending you um, the recordings, um, the links, and you will also have access to it through our YouTube channel. So if you don't get to ask your question now, it's okay. Yeah, any questions? And if, if you feel comfortable unmuting, you can ask verbally and not just um, in the chat. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to leave your um, your links here. If, uh, 
So, so um, are you asking for a, a group with Europe language jobs or a group with me? You can connect with me on TikTok, on Instagram. I have a podcast called College and Career Coffee Chats. Um, so I actually do have a Facebook group. I'll go to this slide. Um, here, um, Erica sent the direct links, so it's easier to, to connect it, but you can also screenshot or copy this. Mm -hmm. You can, I have a free Facebook group where I do trainings, I connect with people mm -hmm. to ask, I mean, to answer questions. It's called College and Career Hype Crew. So you can connect there um, with me and my community of uh, individuals who are also looking for jobs and motivation. So you all can connect with each other. And then we have the podcast. I'm on TikTok. I also have a YouTube channel, Deluling Academy, and you can find me on Instagram. Um, I also post information there as well. Um, how can I share ideas in a cover letter if I'm applying to a social worker role? So. For a social worker, you are doing work in the community, right? So an, um, an idea maybe that you can share is how do I create uh, communication among community members, among professionals and families, right? If you have an idea for a program or an idea for a specific opportunity to connect everyone better to uh, make sure that the students or whoever you're working with um, accomplish their goals, right? So that's an idea that maybe you can include on the cover letter as a social worker. Delisa, thank you so much, this was great. Oh, thank you, Marina. I'm so glad that you found this helpful and uplifting. Um, that went to my heart. So if, for instance, you want to work in Europe, there are specific languages that are more in Yemen. And that's exactly also what Elisa said. Uh, there are specific sectors, but uh, if you want to learn a new language overall, for instance, there are the three main ones um, that companies are always looking for, and they are German, um, French, and Dutch. Of course, there is also Czech, uh, some uh, Nordic languages as well, but definitely Spanish is always used, English, of course, um, but the three main ones at the moment, they're in most uh, demand are German, um, French and Dutch. So, so just in case you guys are interested. Um, also, Alicia um, is offering, I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more um, your resume uh, program. Um, yes, I have a revamp your resume uh, course uh, that is um, supporting individuals to apply for jobs and it's really specific to resume writing. So if you need to edit your resume, write a new resume or figure out how to make it um, more job friendly for the application process um, and the ATS system, I explain more in depth uh, why you shouldn't use logos and certain things um, in a resume in that course. So I can, let's see, where's the chat? I send uh, the resume uh, link. Oh, the resume. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Yeah. So that's a uh, really done for you um, or done D DIY kind of course. And the whole tagline is re revamp your resume in a weekend where you can do this in one sitting. Um, they're very bite-sized videos, maybe five to 10 minutes. And then you have an action item. There is a Trello board that helps you stay organized to know where you're going. And if you're not familiar with Trello, Trello is a uh, kind of like an agenda organizing system. Like when you do one thing, you can check it off and it tells you what to do next, you check it off. And then it's based on different um, categories. So if you go to the website um, that Erica just shared, revamp your resume, you can see what it looks like on the inside. I have pictures there. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram and we can chat about it. Um, I also offer and support one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you need a more individualized support and planning, we can work together. Um, you can go to the link to my on my website. It's deliciaallercon.com backslash let's work together. And you can check out what kind of services you're interested. We can do a VIP session or a six month, six weeks um, 
long-term coaching sessions, depending on where, where you're at in your career and what you need, you know better than I do since we're just meeting for the first time. So if any of those things interest you, please um, connect with me. Uh, if you're applying to graduate school, I've also created a graduate school organizer and a scholarship um, database uh, presentation that is actually on YouTube for free for scholarships and grants, but the graduate school organizer training session is available for anyone applying to graduate school. So I invite you to look at all those things on my website um, and see what works for you. If you need any more resources, there are free downloadable like resume checklists uh, on my website as well. You can just go to um, blacks backslash resources and you can see um, all the information is on the website. Do you post academic positions in your Facebook or LinkedIn group? I do post um, any opportunities that I see in the groups. I do post that uh, based on what I know people are looking for. Um, and I do do some mini trainings in the Facebook groups um, and provide all those resources as well that I just spoke to here. Uh, just reminding you guys that if you still have more questions, you can always uh, connect with the DC on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on TikTok, and follow her in all of the, the social media. Um, or also email us. Oh, there you go. Awesome. And if we don't have more questions, I guess we can um, maybe conclude here. Let me stop um, the recording as well. Just one second.